Here we meet Dennis McBride, a longtime Boulder City resident, historian, and author who probably knows more about the history of Boulder City than anyone. This is my haunt. This is the Boulder Dam Hotel. You know, when the government started building Hoover Dam, they knew that it was going to be a huge tourist attraction. And there were actually people coming into Boulder City to watch the dam being built as soon as they started, but there was no place nice for them to stay. So the government put out a special contract to build the Boulder Dam Hotel, opened in 1933, and from the day it opened all through the 1930s, it was filled with celebrities, millionaires, movie stars who came out from California. This is probably the most historically associated building in the city. This was the great thing about the Boulder Dam Hotel. At each room had a private bath, it was air-cooled, air-conditioned, and it had radiant heat radiators, old steam radiators in every room. That, that was very luxurious for that time For period, that time, for the 30s, Las Vegas had nothing like that, in fact. This was the place to stay, the nicest place to stay <laughs> between Salt Lake and Los Angeles. But wasn't Boulder City at, at one point the biggest city in the state? It was at one point the largest city by population, yeah. At the height of dam construction, say 1933, 1934, there were over 7,000 people in Boulder City. And at the time, Las Vegas had 5,000. Reno had about that same number, too. I love the theater. It's got such a great old style look to it. You know, this building has not been altered very much since it was opened in May 1932. And it was actually one of the more important buildings in town because it was the only source of, of uh, entertainment for the workers. They had 24-hour uh, showings all year round because they had three shifts of men, of course, working down at the dam. And the men who worked graveyard, for instance, and had to try to sleep in the daytime when it was so hot, would come up to the Boulder Theater and sleep in there because it was the only air-cooled building ah. in the city. So Good the reason to go to yeah, the movies. The owner, of the, the owner of the theater sort of reserved the back few rows for these men, oh. and they'd be full, snoring through the movie, sleeping. <laughs> And there was, there was no gambling, and still isn't here, which no, is the no. really distinguishing That's, yeah. feature. Boulder City, um, when the government owned it, essentially, banned liquor and gaming and prostitution, which, of course, you could have right outside the city limits right. at Railroad no, Why did they do that? What was their reason? They wanted social control of Boulder City. They had to make sure that that dam was going to be finished with as few deaths as possible, and they didn't need a bunch of workers showing up with hangovers the next day, <laughs> you know, trying to set dynamite and pour concrete. Right. So they kept that control, and actually, liquor has only been legal in Boulder City since 1969, mm. and, of course, gaming and prostitution still are banned. Right. Although many people know Boulder City as the gateway to Hoover Dam, they don't always understand how vital the city was to the dam's construction. Las Vegas was the nearest town to the dam site, and the combination of distance and the Las Vegas lifestyle were deterrents. So Boulder City was constructed by the federal government and the contractors. Now this looks like a very quaint little neighborhood. Yeah, this neighborhood, this whole part of Boulder City, all the streets named after the alphabet, Avenue B, C, D, F, G, H, that was the six companies part of town. The six companies are the contractor who built the dam, and all of these little houses that you see along the street and all the other streets were the workers' cottages for the married workers who showed up with families. They started building them, oh, in the spring of 1931, and they had crews, dozens of crews working, two-man crews. Mm -hmm. And they threw up one house and a half each day. Wait, two uh, men would build a mm -hmm, house by mm -hmm, themselves in a mm -hmm. day and a half? <laughs> yes. And then the next day they'd come back and build the missing half of one house and a whole other house. You see, and go on like that all the way down the street as they as They, they were all identical? They were all identical. In fact, there were wonderful stories from a lot of the workers. Before the streets were paved, before the sidewalks, before the trees and the grass, the houses all looked exactly the same. And workers who would come home off shift at night would often get lost and walk into the front door of the wrong house. Get a little disoriented. Yeah, a little disoriented. Dennis, we've only traveled a couple blocks from where we were, and the houses are so different. Why are the neighborhoods I know. so this is the, divergent? The, it's such interesting. Uh, 
When the government built Boulder City, they actually built it in two parts. The subcontractors, the contractors built the six companies part, the little cottages down on the flats, they called them. Because we're now up on the brow of the hill, the Granite Hill. And everything on the flats that the six companies built was meant to be torn down when the dam was finished and returned to desert. And where we're walking now is the government part of town. The Bureau of Reclamation built these houses for their employees. And it was meant that this would stay after the dam was finished. And these neighborhoods would be permanent for a small force just to run the dam. And the houses up here, of course, were built far more substantially. They were built out of brick in this beautiful architecture, various architecture from house to house. Mm -hmm. And the government also took care of all the landscaping. We've just scratched the surface. There's a lot more to know about Boulder City, and you can arrange for a walking tour with the Boulder City Museum. We thank Dennis and move on to our final stop.